This is 11.3 domain of a logarithmic function advanced. So basically what you have to do is you have to, if you notice, your argument shifts it left or right, which shifts your vertical asymptote, okay? And then it's just a matter of um, whether you're to the left of the vertical asymptote or to the right of the vertical asymptote, okay? Now that all depends on your argument. Okay. Your argument must be positive, okay? So basically what you're going to do is you're going to set your argument greater than or equal to zero. However, if you have a fraction, okay, then you need to be setting the numerator greater than, not equal, because you can't equal the asymptote. Um, you have to set the numerator greater than zero or the denominator greater than zero depending on where the variable is okay so in this case my variable is in the denominator so it's the denominator that I would be setting um, actually you need to do the whole fraction and then because of it you need to compare um, you just need to this it's not this for the fraction the fraction is a special case and we'll talk about that when we get to that problem I'll do that one last one is a special case okay so for this problem I'm gonna take my argument and I'm gonna set it greater than zero now in order for me to solve that I would have to square both sides of my inequality which means I get 5x minus 2 by itself and on the right side 0 times 0 is still 0 if I add 2 to both sides I get 5x is greater than 2 and if I divide by 5 on both sides I get x is greater than 2 fifths, which means that my domain is going to be from 2 fifths and everything greater, which means toward positive infinity. Okay. If you want to graph it, you can. So here's 2 fifths, and we want all the x values greater than 2 fifths, so it would be everything over here. And we already know that there's no equal bar, so that would have an open dot, which is, explains why this is a parenthesis. Now let's over to the next one. So we take our argument and we set it greater than zero. So I'm going to minus one over and I get negative one and then I'm going to divide by a negative. But you have to remember that if you divide or multiply by a negative, the little inequality symbol will flip over. So I actually have x is less than one half in and so on a number line, here's one half, x is less than one half is to the left, and no bar means an open dot, which means my domain is actually gonna be from negative infinity to the one half with an open parenthesis. Okay, now I'm gonna do this one next, and this one is a little bit more lengthier than this one, okay? So I am gonna take what's in the argument greater than zero, and then what I'm going to do is um, this one's weird because you can't just solve for x because of the x squared. So I could minus 1, right, and get um, negative 1, and then I could divide by negative 1, which will make the symbol flip over and positive 1. And you get the square root of this, but then you get x is less than or less than we're assuming plus or minus one okay because the square root of one is plus or minus one but so this is a little bit weird you can't be less than positive one and less than negative one so this really isn't what's happening here we don't know what's happening here. so in this case when you have a square you actually or a cube or any other power you actually need to use these values that you found but you need to test the intervals to see which ones work and which ones don't. And when you test it, you need to test it into the original inequality, okay? So I will pick a number in here, maybe like negative two, pick a number in between these guys like zero, and pick a number over here like positive two. And what I'm doing is I'm plugging them into this expression. And so I get one minus negative two squared greater than zero, one minus four, greater than zero, negative three greater than zero, which is false. So this section will not be part of the domain. 
Now, if I plug in zero, I get one minus zero squared, which is one minus zero, which is one, and that is greater than zero, so that's true. So this section does work. Again, no equal bars, so this will be a, a hole in a hole. Now we check two, and we get one um, minus two squared, which is one minus four, which is negative three. Negative three is not greater than zero. So this one is also false, which means this section is not part of my answer. So my domain here is actually just the middle section, which is parentheses negative one to positive one, close parentheses. Now over here, we do need to talk about the whole argument being greater than zero. But when you have a fraction inequality, you basically need to figure out what the numbers are gonna be here and do the test intervals. And how do you figure out those numbers? You have to set the numerator equal to zero and you have to set the denominator equal to zero. Well, the numerator is negative three and negative three does not ever equal zero. So you'd have no solution here, which means you don't have any numbers on the number line for the numerator. Now for the denominator, when I solve this, I get the solution x equals negative six, which means negative six is gonna be the only number on my number line since I didn't get any other solutions from the numerator. And it is a, a open dot because of the, there's no, there's no um, equal in the inequality. And then I'm gonna test my points. So to the left, I'm gonna use negative seven. To the right, I'm gonna use an easy number like zero, okay? So if I plug in negative seven, I get negative seven plus six, which is um, negative one, which gives me positive three, and that is true. So this section will be part of the domain. Now let's test zero. We get negative three, over zero plus six, which is negative three over six, which is negative one half, and negative one half is not greater than zero. So this one is false, which means this is not part of the solution. So for the domain, it's going to just be this region, which is negative infinity to negative six with the open parentheses, okay? So depending on the problem, sometimes your variables may be in the numerator and you will get some here. Sometimes you have variables in both the numerator and the denominator, and then you'll have two numbers on the number line to work with, just kind of like this one, okay? And so then you'll have to get three test points and then figure out what regions work. So in a previous um, topic, we did do inequalities, right? We did polynomial inequalities, we did rational inequalities, so all of this shouldn't be new. It's just an extension of application for that whole process of solving inequality.